This video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball app makes it easy to keep up to date with the transfer news, scores and stats in one place. To download the OneFootball app, click the link in the description below. Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's alright. So we're just uh, filming our latest podcast. Uh, this is carrying on from where we won against Watford. And this is going into the Bournemouth game and I'm joined by Kyle. Alright. Hello. Rob and his Santa hat <laughs> and the brand. Like it. Why I? Mark. <laughs> it. Mark, how are you doing? Oh. Good. And Johnny as well. Very good, yeah. Right, so let's crack on with it. We've got loads to talk about football, off the field problems as new, it's Newcastle. That's what, what, what it brings. I'm going to start with Johnny. Um, we won 2 1 against Bournemouth. Uh, no last sells in Shelby though, were you a bit tad worried? Going at that. Um, obviously through the game when they obviously get injured, you think oh, oh, they're our best, they're our best players or they're our most important players um, at the time. But the substitutes made a massive impact. You know, Shaw made a brilliant impact at the back, and Keystone Young, Young, you know, it looks like it was high in hibernation. We didn't know who, where he was, and he's just come out of nowhere and he's, and he's completely transformed um, against Watford and against Bournemouth. So. We've done very well, and it was a massive win, especially back to back home at home games. We hadn't done well at home, um, and so it went two on the bounce was huge. You were um, because you were there that one. You were doing all the interviews afterwards. I remember you rated Fernandez at a nine. I think I, I think I think when you interviewed me the first time on it. Oh yeah, it was, it was Key, surreal. Key was a nine, and I think obviously uh, Rondon a double there. Ten. Rondon was a ten. He was brilliant. I mean, for me. We played to his strengths, getting yeah, the that, balls that, in. That goal though, the cross into Kennedy. Yeah, that was, speak up, mm, speak up, speak up. Speak up. <laughs> and then, I superb cross into Kennedy. Very like, Robert Shearer-esque. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. brilliant. Rob Lee played that way, Rob Ayn, Rob Ayn put it into Shearer, and Shearer put it in the top corner of the header. But that's, Rob, that's basically reminiscent of what it was like, what a goal. And it deserved being a nominee for goal of the month as well. Do you should have won it? Yeah. Mm, no, that's not for me. It's not for me. To be honest, I can't remember the other goals, so... Oh. It's really good by our standards, but yeah, for in, in terms of all for a Newcastle teams. goal, it's fantastic because yeah. Newcastle don't score many great goals. Well, are you any years? This is for everyone. I'm throwing this out. Are any years surprised we're doing so well without Lascelles and Sheldon? That's two wins on the bounce. Um, when you yes, considering the first time we've seen like Key Shaw and Fernandez that they weren't overly yeah you weren't overly thinking oh great these are going to be good players they were a bit shaky because we haven't seen them mm. exactly but even when we've seen them in like the cup games or or sort of like as a routine they didn't seem that confident but boy i tell you what, they hit the ground running when they came on and when they were needed there what about yeah. Bournemouth Rob? uh yeah i was Please. really happy with how those players shot and key especially stepped up to the yeah. plate because i mean when you lose the cells and shelby arguably are two best players and and when they're not there, you, and on the bad run that we were on going into like November, then yeah, it was cause for concern. It was time to get time to get worried. But hey, I mean, we, we got those wins crucially, um, all thanks to those players making that step up. They're both great on the ball as well, though, aren't they? Like Key is so brings calm. Him, yeah. Like he brings the team forward, and against Bournemouth, he was he was brilliant again. He peaked against who? Bournemouth. Bo- Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Oh, Bournemouth. Sorry, Bournemouth. Uh, Bournemouth. As someone corrected us in the comments <laughs> to, of that video, they say Bournemouth. Like, uh, but um, I. They, they bring the team forward. He brings so, the ten yards forward, doesn't he? Yeah, he's mm. so he's so calm on the ball and sure, he, he can pick a pass unbelievably. Like. I don't think we've got. I don't think we've got a defender who has as good as him. Like he, he can just. Lejeune. I, I think Shaw can pass really? better. I really do. Yeah. yeah. He's just so, he's so good on the ball. Like, do you reckon those two will ever play together? No, definitely not. Similar. Definitely They're not. Definitely similar. not. It's like putting like you can't put two two very similar players at the back. You look at the likes of Man United back when they had the uh, Ferdinand Vinicius. and Vinic. You know, you need someone that's going to be. You know, a rough and tumble and going to get on with them. Put a he- put his head when yeah. they put people at their foot. With Ferdinand, it was Mike. Right, he can get out with the ball and play those passes. But coming back on Newcastle, I think it was two different halves and two fantastic halves. The first, we put pressure on Bournemouth. We made it really, really difficult and got the early goal. And obviously, in the second half, I think we showed a lot of character, especially in the last 20 minutes when you know Bournemouth are getting back into the game and they've got a goal disallowed for offside. Um, you know, it showed a lot of character to make sure that we get over the line and it was a massive, massive three goal. points. I honestly thought they were lucky to get the goal. Like, I think it was just before half time, Lerma with a uh, header from a corner, another set piece. But um, other than that, we, we, we were just brilliant with tea. It's not very, because we're so used to not having loads of crosses whipped in, 
but you know there was we we'll probably talk about Mitrovic maybe at some point but you know we never really played to his strengths however it seems like when Rondon plays let's get the ball out wide let's whip it in yeah you think I mean, that's my tactic going forward with him there whether we play four at the back or five at the back but I don't think we, we do whip it in all the time I think we have more with Rondon we have done definitely a, a few times but with crosses of like with Rondon, 15 to 20 now with Mitrovic though you'd always have to whip it in with Rondon you don't well, because he brings something different. Yeah. So you, work you, you can look at different games there. He can score goals there, no matter how you put the ball into the box. With Mitrovic, I think it's a case that you have to cross it in for him to try and do anything. I we've, never, we've never played a striker strengths before. No, we haven't, but I think the, big, the biggest difference between... Haven't Rondon before. Exactly, but the biggest difference between Rondon and Mitrovic is that Rafa trusts Rondon. Yeah. He'd never yeah. trusted Mitrovic, and you, you looked every time... I think you could tell Rafa was on, on edge because he thought... Is he going to get a silly yellow card? Is he going to put us under pressure? You know, he was anonymous against West Ham. And I think you look at uh, for Mitrovic against West Ham for Fulham, but you look at Rondon, does he ever look like he's going to get a, give a yellow card or a red card away? No. Does he always make himself about, does he put himself about, does he make sure he wins the ball in the air? He's like, he's controlling. He's oh, it's all the brilliant. Yeah. One. yeah. Like, honestly, just, he's just generally so, strong, he's so he? good. He, bring, he brings the team, like, he brings the team forward with his hold-up play. Which is great. I mean, which is you why could I say Mirovic could uh, has done that in the past, but I just don't no. think he does it. See, I think well Mirovic is more likely to give it away. But for me, my question is, when we're at the end of the game and we're needing to, to pump the ball up and get someone to hold it, why the hell do we swap them for Yosli who can't do? Who else is right? Who else is there? No, that's a great really. more y- y- Yosli can hold the ball well. He can yeah. do everything bar score goals. I think he's the ball Josso mm-hmm. can do like everything else, right? Ball score goals. He can hold the ball. He's a great He's got a great attack. Since he's been coming on, I have not seen him hold the ball though. He's out of touch. When we look at an old Trafford, I said to you, he's the perfect man to bring on now. Just to bring it up and let the midfielders have some of the ball. No, I think bringing on a, fifth, a, a third defender to make a five of the back would have helped well, as well, well there. Well. But you know, anyway, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, let's move off that. Um, let's move over to the Monday night game. Um, Johnny, we briefly saw you. You were very ill, weren't you? I do you know what it was? You if it wasn't, sick as a chip, man. Honestly, do you know if it wasn't for the fact that I had all the train tickets on my phone to pay for to get a burning, I don't think I would have What gone. is it about burning? Striking people? I was ill oh. the previous year. Now it's you. Good luck to one of you three next year, by the way. If, we're, if we're still, they're still in the division. We've we're got still in the Paul division. as well who might uh, <laughs> take a fall for Burnley next year. But no, Burnley, Burnley was... I think the worst bit about Burnley was walking around a quarter to eight to get told that there was a half an hour delay and I was going to stay in the freezing cold for an extra half an hour. But the three points made it worth it. Yeah. I- I managed to kill time. I'll, I'll, I'll go for a piss. <laughs> like, there's, there's two toilets in the entire away end. I did warn you. I did warn you. Oh, you what Sorry, are you? There's, two, there's, there's, there's 2,000 people in the in away end, maybe more, and there's two toilets. I'm sorry, Lee. Correction, Kyle, there's three, because you had the port lose next to the uh, oh, that was the oh, supporters' tent. Next to the away support. That tent wasn't there last season. <laughs> no, no the, pre- the previous season. Well, they spent the premiership money on it. Like, and I, I need some more uh, uh, shit money. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought it was hilarious when I seen the tent, but I've, uh, I got told by Liam, one of my followers, that um, Villa have it as well, so it's, yeah. just, it's one of them. Um, and I'm a Villa's a championship club, though, so you know, Premiership yeah, but, championship. But, but, yeah, don't start that, like, Villa don't are start one of the big up teams in no, England, England Villa. to be fair. Though, the the one thing team. which I'm going to say for Burnley, in terms of the away end, the, the actual space for the supporters is actually. Probably I quite hate the last generous because I was down by the bottom right. Yeah. We've got this wicked little step thing that you can yeah. step on, so if like, uh, so, yeah. what, so when we've got the three points, I can just stand on the steps and say, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, where, it's basically the seats on like where you normally go to a ground, they're, they're tied to the back, they're actually tied to the step, so you've got that little bit of a step up there when you need it. Yeah. Right, Rob, I'll come to you. Yes. Let's get back on the football topic. Um, were you surprised because we switched to wing backs? Yeah. For this because we're, we're one on the weekend and then Rafa changed it and went five at the back or three at the back, however you want to look at it. And well, I was really surprised about Richie being trusted in the left wing back position yeah. again because I think I thought he had a good game actually. Yeah, 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 he had a really good game and uh, I think that nice miss. I think the last time he played in that position was Chelsea last December. Last yeah, year. he got torn and to shreds. I, yeah, I felt so sorry for him because it was. He gave away a penalty and. He got torn a bit. So and there's a difference the between Hazard and <laughs> Goodman, yeah, Lennon, or whatever. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, I, I see what you mean. But to be trusted in that position again, to have the confidence to play as well as he did that night, and yeah, he got the assist for Clark's goal as well. He, he, he just kept finding yeah. space. Like, it was just 
keep surprising, so, wasn't it? And then you've seen the two, you know, we got off to a great flyer, the two centre backs. You might say it's fortunate with Fernandez and Clark, but we're 2 0 up and everyone's in good spirits, weren't they? Singing mm, and yeah, yeah, it was good. It reminded me a little, a little bit of Old Trafford when you're 2 0 up. <laughs> Did you lose any air when we scored? No, I didn't, because <laughs> no. I'm not sure. Uh. But strangled us all. I said on video. What do you mean? I strangled you? Of course I didn't. Didn't, didn't sit down next to him. Sit next to him. Whatever you used to get up in your spare time. Start start the rumours off. That you talk about it was a beauty. It, it was, was like we'll talk, mm. the thing is, I hate short corners. I hate them because nine times out of ten, they, they don't get into the box. Or they get blocked by the first man and winds us up. Yeah, there's nothing worse than when you do get a corner, you work hard for that corner and yet you don't even threaten the box, let alone the goal. There's nothing no, no, more frustrating. Good. I'm still giving that goal to Fernandez. Yeah, the same yeah. Yeah. Given it him though, isn't it? I know, but the, the majority of the sky were going to no one goal, it's not. He was on target, I'm giving it to him. He deserves it. And then the atmosphere you were talking about there, uh, Kyle, because um, we're turning it up, everyone was just singing. Yeah, it's it always was, good when you win the way, isn't it? What worried me is. And I'll cut with Johnny. This is like Burnley were just <coughs> had one tactic. That was it, and they were going long. And we knew it, it was going to happen. When they got that goal back, you think, oh, he have a gun. It was it was actually really disappointing because we'd done a lot of hard work, and it was probably that I'm going to probably put it out there. I think that first half against Burnley was better than the first half against Bournemouth because you look at how we played. Did Burnley ever look like threatening us apart from when they scored? I I know, never touched the Bafka never really touched the ball though. Like it was no, a couple of times. Didn't have a plan B, did I mean, they? Burnley? Didn't, that, the, like, the crowd at Burnley got behind them for like 10, 20 minutes, but like other than that, the, I don't really think they threatened the goal. No, they, but it got nervy the last five minutes. Don't was there a crowd there? What? Was there a crowd? I know there was a wave band, but I couldn't hear anyone no. else. So, you know. I think you look at you look at Burnley's forwards, Chris Wood, Ashley Barnes. Vokes, uh, and Vokes got the goals, fantastic header, you've got Main to get that. Yeah. Mm. But they're I all think the same. better header than Ron Dons, personally. Possibly. I think that you, oh, look at the yeah. distance, you look at the distance away, and you look at the Kennedy cross for Ron Don, it's, you can't miss if you've got a good, if you can get your head on it. Yeah. I think it is a harder goal that Vokes has done. But the same sort of player, and I think Rafa did a very good thing in putting the three centre halves to manage yeah. that. And then when they've decided to bring on Ashley Barnes and keep all three of them up, on there and we still managed to cope really well in the last 20, 15 20 minutes i think you would only say to brafford had to make one unbelievable save just before half time yeah. when they were putting a little bit of pressure on and maybe one save in the second half and apart from that you can go do you know what it was a relatively comfortable night other other games we might have dropped points we might have dropped points and we might have come away with a draw but do you know what again we talk about I character don't think two ones justice mate i really don't like, no. could be you can one. see why Boone are down there. R- Richie yeah. missed, missed the season. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Possibly hit the post yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm not going to go on his back. Well, could have just me and Paul were celebrating. We thought it was, we thought it was in, and then it was what? Oh, it hasn't and then, um, and then Jostler was well. He hit the post. He yeah. was really unlucky. He hit the post. I mean, they like, could have been four or five, mate. Honestly, you know, when that Burnley was shocking. Were, when that yeah. left his foot, though, we also knew. I think every Newcastle fan was celebrating, going, "This is going in." Yeah. yeah. And when it, and yet so. you, you couldn't actually believe that it hit the post and went out. You can. Yeah. Uh, that's why I thought it's going to come back to Portworth. And I'm going to be honest, I, I think the one player that surprised me more so was Clark. Clark, yeah. Because mm. no one really could, oh Christ, Clark. But yes, there was even calls, yeah, when the sales were struggling, going, we should have had Clark in instead. Well, Clark was dropped so, the next one. That was I know, surprising. and that was the surprising thing for me. I we'll come on to West Ham in a minute, but he was dropped for that. And just talking about afterwards, the obviously Johnny, you were Ilse, you weren't part of the, the after team, if you want to call it that, but. Those fan cams were funny, I thought. I mean, everything was happening. We're, 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 we're going to get this, man over. We've got this thing now where we become a part of the traffic in a car park where we do videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then there's some sort of exhaust going off. And uh, an exhaust for Paul's. It made a great thumbnail name. It's behind the critic, little ways. Uh, it was just all happening around then. There was reporters going past the whilst we filmed. It was just like... It was like an off the cut documentary going on. We literally found one of the three places in Burnley. There's a pub, a cricket ground, a football stadium. Oh, that's horrible it. to get That's, that's all that's there. I mean, I a couple of hours foot. And the road out. Ah, uh, please, I didn't drive on that one because it's a nightmare to get to. Great there, we're going to be um, talking about the horrible 3 0 defeat at West Ham. Um, I don't know where to start with this because after our good form, I cut my Kyle since he next to us. Three wins on the bounce, and this was like when you when you see it, Newcastle nil, West Ham three. It looks like a hammering. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Click on there. I was I was lining that one up. Oh, take that from me. There. When you see it, but after you look at the actual stats, we had something like sixteen attempts or something like that. We did, I. And it was a case of 
more so. I mean, how poor was Fernandez? We've been praising him all season. Yeah, that's that's his blip, I think. Yeah, well, that, he's, yeah. been, he's been fantastic. So I, I can't really knock him, but against West Ham, he was shocking. He got caught up for the second goal, which Fernandez uh, slotted away in the first one as well. I think that was Sean. Um, just yes, a catalog of errors. Wasn't it was it? just it was massive errors from the team. Like three 0 doesn't really do the game justice because we had several chances, but. Yeah, to lose three 0 to West Ham and just it, it knock it seemed to knock everyone's confidence because we're like, oh we've won three on the bounce so all as well. well. You said at Goodison we're gonna beat West Ham. No, that was him who said that. He says, oh we'll hammer West Ham the weekend. It's like no, <laughs> like, that and, and that's the, Can I just I say, didn't say we'll beat West Ham the weekend? I, I said if, if you watch right. the video, I didn't actually say we'll hammer West Ham. I called in three people and I says we'll we'll hammer you, which led to that uh, funny comment from Forty. The chat about 40. Um, and obviously, Dan was there from West Ham Van TV, and he was saying the same thing that we were saying as well uh, is that we got cut open so many times, and that's the game. That's the reason why they won. What did I? Um, they've got that, they've got an out of it in Philippe Anderson. Philippe Anderson, how he's playing for West Ham, I do not know. He should be playing for a top team. Like, I think he, he, will. He, he will one day. He's a fantastic player. He, he's so direct, he's got so much skill on the ball. I mean, yet, we'll know yet that he'll be quick. Like you've seen, you've probably seen his video from the Augsburg game where he smartly flies back, and he couldn't touch Felipe Anderson. Like yeah. I mm-hmm. couldn't give that lad so much more credit. Cause I wish, I wish he played for us. Because honestly, it's different. Class. Forty-two million, we're shopping totally yeah. different shop. Aren't As we? Paul says, um, what's it? Um, Little beans or something. Aye, <laughs> beans. <laughs> yeah. We're shopping at Aldi and they're shopping at. Uh, they get box beans for <laughs> um, Mark, we switched it back to a four again. So we went from four to five, back to four. Was that the right call? No, I think it's easy to say that in hindsight, but no. But I think we work better with the three at the back. And you've already yeah. said Clark was dropped. Yeah. I think we'll look more confident with the three at the back. So I think, yeah, especially attacking wise, I think the wing backs feel more confident knowing that they've got three set, yeah, at the back. And then even if you push Diarmi into that, as someone who can we just create jump more in front for the them. back. We do. We look more vulnerable at the back. I think Yedlin suits it because he's more of an attacking. Sort of like, in the four? Yeah. He's got cover. No, in the five. He's got cover. Oh, in the five. In the five, so I think that's. There's less worry on him because he knows that he's got cover with the three in the back. So he can get forward that little bit more. Kenny? You get the full back on the left. That's well. left back, one. not Yeah. 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 And that was a surprise for me seeing him coming, like. I thought he did well over the third quarter. He did, he did. 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 He hasn't done bad when he when he's, he's, he's been asked to come in there, and that's the one thing where we need to look at that. I think all the players when yeah when Key was coming in yeah we're worried about him yeah when Fernandez or Shaw come in we're worried about it, and even now when Manquillo's coming in you're worried about him. But I think I don't know. I think maybe more the three suits the the wing backs more than but Raph, the, 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 but Rafa identified this in the summer. You know, we were, just, were lacking numbers in the full box area, full back area. No investment. No, he, if we had an extra right back or an extra left back, we wouldn't be thinking, oh God, we've got a yeah, yeah, player. Imagine like, the wing back system with an attacking left back instead of like, someone that, well, can, that, that they can play in a position similar to it. But it, it, all it takes is an injury or a suspension. You look, and you look at the last three weeks, where Dummett's been injured, and Yedden's, we'll obviously touch on it later on, but it had, it had a red card. We were, we were knackered. You know, that, and, that, and it goes back to the summer. That's depth. Yeah. Uh, I think I even said it when we found Cameron Hull. Like, the depth that in this team is absolutely fucking shocking because we've seen most of that depth at Hull. Mm. And you've got the likes of Aaron's, like Longstaff, Sterry, like, no offence to the two lads, but I don't think they're ready yet. Um, it's like, that's the depth of this squad. I think we just need a couple more signings to show up. When you look at West Ham. Especially in that midfield and left back. Like, how many, well, how how many games have had the same left back going at the next? Mm. Two consecutive games, what happened to everyone? It's just Dummett. Yeah. Well, if you look at left back or left wing back, you've got Dummett who can play there, you've got Kennedy who can play there. I don't like Kennedy in there at all. And, but you, you've got that, Manquillo can play there, and we've got. Clock if you have to. Yeah, but and, mm. and then if you really wanted to, you've got the Zar. Who? Who? Who's he? Who? That's it on Instagram a lot though. Yeah, but we have we have got him, and if you look at right, if you look at right back, Jesus. If you look at right back, you've got Shaw who could probably play there if needs be. You've got Yedlin, you've got Manquillo. 
So in terms of that, it's not necessarily that we haven't got depth of players that can play there. It's probably that we haven't got a player that we would suspect with the quality that can come in and replace. I was going to say, I'll swing it back to you, are they good enough? Yeah, well that's the diff. It's not necessarily the the depth, because I think we've got the depth, but it's more the quality. Now you can also look at that and, and think, is it the case that we need to get some of that, the, the dead wood out of there, so we can then bring those players in? Because otherwise we're just... We'll talk more, we'll talk more on the January transfer coming up shortly. Yeah. Um, Johnny, because you've changed your opinion on the Magpie Club quite a bit, um, yeah. there was meant to be a walk-in. When I say meant to be, I mean there was. It was about, what, 200, 300? Yeah, they defended it on the 11th minute when they scored. Um, which was ironic. Yeah. Was that a success at that point? Obviously not being there is difficult to answer, but if there's only, if like you say, 200 or 300 Well, I'm in the Gallagher, so that's yeah. what I see. So 200 or 200 or 300 people, then no, it's not a success. Mm. I think it's very difficult, and we're gonna, obviously we'll probably talk about the Magpie group about another thing yeah. uh, coming up with the Wolves game. <sighs> We've talked about them in a previous podcast, saying, are oh, the wheels kind of turning, and you know... And and Shai broke, I think. Yeah, I think that's what... what Lost a lot them. of trust. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, when they, they were t- talking about them, this is what the fans were doing. They were in the ground, but they stayed in the concourse, drinking the beer, so they're paying the money. Smart so move. Smart, that, that, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but smart, smart move by the club, what they did. For the people <laughs> that wanted to come in at the 11th minute and were just sitting inside the concourse, they blacked out the TV yeah. so you couldn't watch the game. So if you wanted to watch the game, you're going to have to go to the top of the stairs to watch the game. And then the stewards would say, get in your seat. So in that sense, it was very smart by the club. However, the, in going back to the Magpie group, um, yes, they lost fans at the Shire, Shire Brook. Um, they've got ideas. Whether they're the right ideas for the right time is another story. I think. I think Paul picked on it, on, on it um, really well. If you do, if you do things off the pitch rather than on the pitch, that seems to affect Mike Ashley more. So the share price, for example, I think was something like four hundred and forty pounds per share. Yeah. It's now dropped to almost half. I think the last time I seen it was two hundred and thirty pounds or two hundred and thirty five pounds. That's yeah. massive. Mm. Oh, sorry, that's sorry. That's, I was busy. Yeah, sorry, sorry, happy with that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, but I got that wrong. But um, yeah, the, that's halved, and it's now December. So that's like five, six months. Imagine another five or six months, yeah. and I think that's maybe why. And I, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about it accelerates. When you look that's at the social media, so, Sports Direct was so scared to post anything. Because you just had about 50 people straight away, Newcastle fans, go to Sports Redirect or just slip, criticising Ashley. And that's worked as well. That's and worked that as worked. well. And now they're the back tweeting, the back posting on the page now, but that worked. It's, it's targeting the businesses. We'll come back more on that. Right, uh, what I want to do is come off topic about football. And I wanted to bring it up because the speculation around Miguel and Miel Ron was rife at this point and it hasn't died off, to be fair. I may as well get everyone to sort of Kyle on this. What's your thoughts on him? From what I've heard of him, he's a, he's a good creative player. But the one thing that you maybe might want to look at as a minor criticism is he looks a very, he looks very lightweight. So like, he, it could be like a Remy Cabal all over again. He could like be, he could be very lightweight. But there are players that have adjusted to that, like people from the MLS, like uh, Lamont Donovan and yeah. like players that have adjusted. Dempsey. It could Dempsey as well. They, they've adjusted to the league, so it, it, it is a it's a, it's a cost point to me. Like I'd love to see him at the club because he's a number ten that we need. And it, if we were to go out and buy him, it would show a bit of ambition from the club. So I, I'm all for it, mate. Yeah, get him in if you, you can. You pay that the rumoured fee? Nah. How much is the rumoured fee though? Right, they're talking over twenty million at least. That breaks records. Quite a bit. It's a huge risk. But mm. well, according to that, he he said I'm not going to entertain any offer that doesn't tell with the three. So he's wanting thirty million dollars. He's mm-hmm. going to say that though, isn't he? Because he wants to hire a spinner. If you're selling your house, you're going to put an extra 20 grand on it, won't you? Well, for me, though, when you're looking at it, this is a player that, yes, might be flying in the MLS, but that doesn't prove that he's going to do it in a European league. Because, uh, yeah, no disrespect to the MLS, but the MLS and the European Best league. Paraguay yeah. as well, doesn't he? I know, but there's a big difference to it. Yeah. a chance to take all sides. I know it's a risk there, but is it a risk worth paying 23, 24, 25 million? Because we've had we've had our fingers mm, burnt with yeah. Tovan and Cabela when we spent big money. I'd rather take, no, a, I'd I'd take a risk on Nicol Almiron and complain about Perez all season. No, no, he, puts he, on Perez. he puts pressure on Perez. You look at Perez and it might get the best be, he, you know, a, bit of com- a bit of competition and the fact that as well, 
you look at Perez and he's had poor performances and I'm sure I, I'm, I think well, I, I would imagine he was poor at West Ham let's say we're going with 25 million for Almiron would you pay that or would you pay 25 million for Ruben not just cheap but that's a different question that's a different player one but Almiron so Almiron I think Ruben not just cheap what makes Newcastle, business yeah. sense and very Newcastle like is to loan the player first and then have a future fee he won't do that we might, who knows, we'll allow two foreign loans, which again we'll talk more about it. And he's left footed as well, so he can't be shifted out to the left wing as well, he doesn't just play in the 10. Johnny, what do you think? My personal opinion is that if you've got your head of recruitment going down there to have a look, and Rafa's obviously identified him Very as. That's true, that yeah, of course seems. it is, yeah. I think it is. Steve Nixon. Yeah, I think there's been too, there's too much, there's too much, um, me, too many media. Uh, I can't even think of the word, but too many different people saying that it's it, they're there. I think there's interest there. I think they're probably trying to discuss a fee and maybe try and get an agreement. But until mm. I think the player will want to come. But I think until the fact that he's going to come to the league. Go ahead. I think he's not came off and says something that like, uh, he wants to move to the European League. And it's between us and what, West Ham, I think, so. I think Newcastle and, and Atlanta may have an agreement. So Steve Nixon's probably talked and they've got an agreement in general. That's right, Mark. You speak off. But, but, but until Fat Mike decides that he's going to go ahead with it, you can't, yeah, Penfold or Charlie can't actually make an official bid. My only, someone hoovering if you want to what that noise yeah. is. My only reservation with this deal is that he's playing in the MLS. Yeah. And I know yeah. we've talked about the fact that Landon Donovan's come across and Clint Dempsey and they've done well. But it, it, it's still a gamble because you, you, the MLS, let's be brutally honest, it's not the Premier League, it's not the Bundesliga. What do you say the it's not is, what, League One? Well, mm, a higher, lower championship? Uh, probably lower championship. Lower championship, lower championship, lower championship for me. I think if Bradley Wright Phillips and Sean Wright Phillips are making a, making a good success Bradley of it, you know, then, you, then you've got to say maybe lower championship. However, I think it's a gamble worth taking because you look at the, the fact that we don't spend money at the best of times. I'd be willing to take a risk on a player that might be able to do it rather than not spend any money at all yeah. because we've, yeah, exactly. like, we've not invested any players properly in the last two, probably since the championship when we first got relegated and you bought all those Rafa bought all those players and to get us out of there. So we we haven't done it. Sell to sort of the we did, but you, like, but we, but we put that money back into the club and you have to give credit in that sense. But since we've been promoted or since the January. We try to get Townsend, it's just one thing after another trying to get a player in. And I think that we have this to make a look, statement now. This player looks like it's done, it's just the feet. It is, it? but as well, I think this is a massive thing with Vinny as his future as well. Yeah. Because if they can't get this deal through right, he'd be thinking, look, I don't have to deal with this anymore after the, after the end of, after this end of the season. I'll keep the club up, I'll make my reputation bigger, I'll go to a bigger club and I'll try and get some money there. I think this is a massive window for Newcastle. I don't think yeah. it's. I don't think it's as cut as dry in that. I, also, I don't think it's as cut as dry. I don't think Benitez is going to look at this window and go like that's it. I'm. I'm, I'm we'll talk going. more on the transfer window shortly. Um, next topic is the uh, main market. We were at the Macclesfield game, Sol Campbell's first game. Uh, awful game, but we won on penalties. Freezing cows and not much action. <laughs> How's that your love life, is it? <laughs> 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 I, was, I thought I was explaining yours. Uh, you walked into that one, did you? Uh, right. Get it. Uh, more, the podcast there, it's all about yeah. it. <laughs> but more importantly, we drew Sunderland's first team. Uh, Johnny, your reaction to that draw? Oh, karma. Karma's brilliant. Isn't it? Karma, you call that. Do you know what it is? Like, do you know what it is? No disrespect, but you've got to look at and laugh because, you know, Sunderland's. You know, when they relegated us, essentially, by beating Everton, and we got relegated, and ever since that day, really, everything's gone and, and turned the other way around, and yeah, and this is kind of like the maximum, this is like the best thing you can kind of get, the yeah. fact that they have to play our under-21s, they've got to play their first team players against our reserves. Do you think they're going to do a Netflix documentary about it? Oh, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? But do you know, do you know what the thing is as well, though, and it'd be actually good for our under twenty one to see how far they are, that this is a League One team. <laughs> and but like the top the top end of League One, they've and played the, League they've yeah. played League Two, bottom of League Two teams. It'll be actually a good test to see how far they are from that sort of level. Do you, reckon, do you reckon we'll play any of the over No, no, do and I don't think and I don't think we should. And I think the reason is because let's be brutally honest, we've got bigger fish to fry. We need to make sure that we're we're safe and you know, let's have, maybe have a good FA Cup run. That'd be quite nice as well. But 
Um, but it is something. It is something. But how it does, good does, does, would let's it be, be though if we? Stu- let's I be can br- only say that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be br- let's be brutally honest. If we get beat, it's not an embarrassment to us. If they yeah. get beat, exactly. it's a massive it's embarrassment for them. Exactly. It's a win for us. It's like a derby with nothing to lose. Really, it's just like it's you know it's a freebie for us. But for them, if they get beat off our under twenty one, it'd be interesting to see who plays. As in, like I don't watch the Rooker report, but I think I'd be watching a couple of reactions to it. Oh, do you not see their their? Reaction to Paul Dummett. Yeah, yeah, that was a big, that was a big bite. But you know, with we'll with, with, with the Sun and Newcastle thing as well, is that it'd be nice to see the likes of your Sorensons, your Roberts, you know, the Long players, staff. Longstaff, these players, and see, let's see how good they are, and if they are. Or can they knock on the door and can they, you know, potentially get into our squad for, the one, yeah. squad for the FA Cup? I think that Blackburn game's a big game as well. C- can any of those academy players get on the bench and actually, you know, I want to knock on the door, I want, I want to play this game and yeah, I want to try and play this game. You could look at Wood, uh, Woodman. Yeah, I think Woodman will play maybe both and load them out. Yeah, I think Freddie Woodman's a funny one because I think. He wants to play football, and I feel I feel sorry for him in that. And I don't think Rafa's ready to do that because the Rafa's so good. Mm. I think for him, would would you sell him personally? I, 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 would you would you not would you not sell yeah, him? You don't want to make that mistake, mate. Remember when we did that with Fraser Forster? Yeah. That's what Tim Crow. Yeah. That's what, what you know what I mean. Where's, where's, where's Fraser Forster? Where's Fraser Forster? Where's Fraser Forster? Where's Fraser Forster? Fraser Forster? Fraser Forster? Fraser Forster? Fraser Forster? Yeah, now he's terrible. But like a couple of years ago, when he was in Celtic and first came to Southampton. Possibly, yeah. Once they got to the England setup. Possibly. Do you not think it's like? Sunderland's biggest game of the season will be against a reserve side. I mean, that's just that's the icing on the cake. To me. be fair, though, they'll probably look at it as like they don't want to lose it, but they'll not take too much of a risk because they've got the league. Oh, to if they win it, though, there'll, there'll be digs on Twitter and oh, there will be. But I, that's just the banter. I don't it? think you can necessarily call it their biggest game. I don't even think Sunderland fans will think no. of it as their biggest game They're of the bit. season. They'll look at yeah. Against their promotion, Portsmouth. Portsmouth, game of the Port- Portsmouth. They've got Portsmouth soon. That's their biggest game, or yeah. a Luton, or you know, Barnsley, Don- Barnsley yeah. the Peterborough. They're the teams that they've mm. got to try and get points on because if they do that, let's be brutally honest, that Sunderland should get promoted. Like you've seen, you've yeah. seen the rest of the teams in that division. They should get promoted, but it is still quite funny and ironic that they've got a player under twenty ones, and it, it's you know, for I'm, I'm glad it's at the stay of light as well. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm better. I'm say chairs can fly. <laughs> no, not even, not even that. I think. I think. Oh, the the fact, installed one. I'm just glad. It's, I'm glad it's at their ground and not our ground. Because I think if they if it was at our ground, I think it, it would have been full out, full out. Full out. But when you go out, suddenly you see more chairs than out else, do you? Yeah, to be honest. So. so it's no surprise when the guy's flying. So I've, I've, look, it's, it's going to be a great occasion. occasion. I'm Newcastle surprised fans. that um, I know because Sky you get the two semi-finals and final, so they get three games. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't move one of them semi-finals. We're back on this one because yeah, it's, I'm not surprised. it's got to capture the national media because it's it's a rival week. Isn't the League Cup semi finals the same week? Yeah, yeah. Sure, and I think and if that's yeah. the case, they're not going to put they're not going to put a Tottenham Chelsea game. Oh, we'll not play Tottenham. We'll not have Tottenham Chelsea. We'll have Sunderland against Newcastle in the twenty ones. If they're smart, they'll stream it, put some ads on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything else apart from that? Shall we move off it? Yeah. 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 Right, midweek game. Was it midweek or the Monday night? Everton. Mid- midweek. Mid- 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 um, so the drive down to Liverpool, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll start with Johnny. It was wing backs again. Um, again, because he's switching, we've talked about this already, he's going from 5 to 4, back to 4 to 5. Um, what do you make of last cells, Zaris, and his form? It's funny because you look at the end of last season, he was knocking on the door for England, and there was rumours that there was teams after him, and we can talk about whether West Ham were a big club or whatever but they were, they were definitely not on the door I would imagine there were other clubs that were looking at him as well um, maybe he's been distracted and maybe that's maybe coming into his games and maybe a lack of form what I will say is though is, is that he's a nice guy yes look, he's, the, he's the captain of our club and he deserves to be captain of the club and I think Kyle had a good a good, a good uh, clicked on he did yeah clicked on his there but do you know what it is I, I think Kyle hit the nail on the head uh, in a previous podcast or a previous game where he didn't play well, he epitomises what we're all about, and that we want you know hard working players yeah. to be playing on every weekend with everything they've got. I think it's just a blip. I think he'll get back into form. Um, I would still say that on our on a, on a, everyone's best, best games, the Cells is our best centre half, and he starts and he does. And I, but maybe it's, it's it's a topic, but to, for me, he has to start if he's fit. Captain, he's captain of the club, and I think. 
yes, it's, it was a big error. Well, it was a big error for the Charleston school. But let's talk about Rondon's school. Oh, yeah. What that was finish that was. One. That is a fantastic finish. And yeah, again, Jake, well. Jacob Murphy, where was, where's he been? You know, and mm. that's just another, that's another just talking point. Two of them out of my <laughs> <laughs> um, Can we just say, I actually said in, on the, the drive down there on my Facebook Live that Jacob Murphy deserved a chance. Were you, mm. Rob, I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised with Mankio starting again? Murphy and Axel, because we haven't really seen much of those three. Uh, Mankio. I mean, he played against West Ham, and he had a decent game. I know it was lost 3-0, and well, yeah, ev everything that we right, yeah. talked about earlier. Yeah, Mankio, he had a decent game, and I think he deserved to have another try again. I thought we, we rated him quite highly, didn't we, in, in the player ratings video. Oh, for Everton? Yeah, for Everton. Can't remember. 7 or 8, I think. Um, Murphy, yes, I was very surprised. Because he hasn't been in any substitute benches yeah, either. Yeah. After this game, yeah. he was missing... For the Wolves. It's just a cameo appearance yeah, and just to, to start with that. And credit to him to sort of come in and get that assist for, for that own form goal. Yeah, yeah, he drove down the he, he, he got, got the ball down the lane, he played and brilliant. Over half a pitch and whipped yeah. it over mm. and came over and yeah, all of that the fans and all yeah. that. I think the point, I think what Rafa was probably looking at when he was looking at those is to try and get a bit more pace, especially with Everton and try and break fast and I think that's why he thought like Atsu and Murphy because they were a little mm. bit more pace, yeah, they've got a little bit more speed on them to try and use that as a as a way of yeah. getting at them. I think Rafa played it really well actually. I think you look at five at the bar works for us really well away from home. Mm -hmm. Because it means mm -hmm. that the play that because the home teams always you expect to kind of go on and try and attack yeah. and we'll get you on the counter attack. But as well, Everton have just come off a derby defeat. Yeah. Last minute that but you know what it is that, that would have taken a lot out of everybody at that club because you yeah. know it's not nice especially in the last minute so oh, I think Rafa did the right thing so and I think that would have yeah. frustrated Everton more the fact that we went one the look and the fact that we managed to hold on again to get a good point not many not many teams this season have gone to Everton and come away with something and that could be the difference between us and say the likes of Cardiff, Southampton, Palace, West End. I was say West Ham. Like Cardiff, Southampton, Palace, and Burnley. We'd offered a point up before. Oh, we'd have said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point there. Good, 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 there's one player that probably really surprised us, and that was Atsu. Atsu, yeah, he's been knocking yeah, on the door. You looked at that and you're going, Jesus, is that the same one? What was he like, Rob? Because I like, I didn't really see much of the other game. Was Atsu like just I'm different kettle of fish, or was it just out, out of character? Out of all the second half chances that we had, he, he was, uh, they fell to him, and I'd yeah. say he was, he was probably the best player on yeah, the night, wasn't got, he? He, he, he got, got because in the of the really goal. well that he got in yeah. behind. Well, we couldn't he, see anything down the right wing in the second half, could oh, we? No. <laughs> Yeah, he, sure. he didn't offer, I know he got the goal, he didn't offer much, but most of it was through Atsu. Yeah. Atsu was, yeah, yeah. was really good to be fair, but I know Paul's had a class that have absolutely yeah. slated him at Knox Forest and rightly so, but right. so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just around this, around the festive period, he loves playing football. I think that's right, just a very religious bloke, isn't he? But yeah, he loves Christmas time. One thing with Atsu, I think that's why he keeps the likes of Murphy on the team, um, is his defensive work. Yeah. People, mm. they don't, uh, they might not see it at the matches, but what Rafa asked him to do, he's ve it's very uh, disciplined yeah. and what he does, he does very well defensively, I think attacking, we just want to see a little bit more variety and going forward, mm. you know, I, I remember the Bournemouth game, he kind of surprised everybody, he took a player on, you know, took on his left foot, got the shot, it was a good save by Begovic, if he can do that more frequently, um, you know. The thing is, he can pr he's proven he can be very direct, yeah. remember in the championship? I think like, but it's that I know, level. To, I, know to, I know to another level, look, we, the attitude to just drive forward. Yeah. How, how close was he though to get the win and go? Yeah. And I tell yeah. you, I think, I think the way fans would have been going absolutely off it if he'd have scored that. Yeah. But, yeah. What do you reckon of um, Everton fans saying we'll park the bus with 23% possession? Don't care, we've got a point. Don't give a shot. You got a point. Couldn't care less. I really couldn't. You, you go into the game trying to get something out of it, and yeah, draw is an excellent result. Go, like, just given our it, record, it's just it. hard. Take sort your stadium out before you come up. Have you seen the state of it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I think I, look, I can understand that. But I think you know, Evan would, Evan, let's be brutally honest, would expect the three points in that game. Um, but then, this is the problem. That any other team has such little percent, like, percentage and nothing said about it. When your castle do it, oh, it's part in the book. It's because it's exactly, yeah. I mean, you, you look at what Chris Hewton said, I, I don't know, I might be going off topic here, but writing against Chelsea at the weekend, Chris Hewton said in his post-match interview that when you play really defensively like Brighton did, they stayed in the game throughout the match, whereas if they went and attacked them, 
you know, yeah, yeah, Chelsea are going to yeah. score a good four or five against them. If we do it though, you know, pundits get on our backs. I remember when it uh, like, it's Newcastle. I remember yeah. when like man, you, like man, you parked the bus all the time on the Mourinho, but when he when it pulls off, I would say Mourinho masterclass in the like, But when Rafa does it, in it Newcastle, depends. Who, it, it's it, like, it how depends. Who against. Yeah. Well, depends who it against. against. We did it against Chelsea, and we had nearly were. And to be honest, if it wasn't for a very debatable refereeing decision, many of them the we probably could have got something. We were again, see. I would have said Manu, but Manu I don't think were again that defensive because we were. really hit them. Man City we were like, oh, we were again close to getting. But you look at Man City, we've that. done better at the Etihad than any other team. He's getting called a defensive yeah. coach, doesn't he? Like, um, who cares? It, if Kyle Walker didn't score, Screamer would have got a point at City, Ma- and the point at City's. It's like three points. It's an absolute fortress at the minute, City. Right, let's move on to the weekend. Um, I don't know how we lost this one. Newcastle 1, Wolves 2. Mm. A last oh. minute defeat. Again, we played Still the wing nice. backs, and I was more surprised because he's kept, kept switching between 4 to 5, back 4, and he went with 5 at the back. I called, I, I called for it. I, yeah. said, I think we'll play better wing backs, I think we should play it at home. I know fans are like, they fought the back goal for them at home, but I think I think we play our best football going forward with 5 at the back yeah. system. Can you remember the opposition we were against there as well? Shea was suspended. Because when um, we're going forward, we have five in midfield, and it's like, it, we're, we're really good when we get on. I, on the ball, I still, I, that was probably a really good performance from us, I thought, in the first half. And even when we went down to 10, when, I, when if you were looking at a side that was more likely to win the game, mm. it wasn't Wolves. Oh, I don't know about that. When we went down to 10 men? When we went down to 10 men? I don't, I still think when we went down to 10 men, we mm-hmm. still. In possession, they were knocking on the door like Dubrovka and made, made it an nice. absolutely fucking brilliant save. Like, so we had a couple of chances. Though. I just think if, if you were looking at it, I don't. I, I wasn't worried, thinking, "Oh, we're going to get slaughtered here." I actually thought we coached quite well being down in ten men. I think on the, when we had possession in ten men, it didn't look like we had ten men. But when we didn't, it did. It did. Good. Yeah, I yeah. thought it did. But um, it, that. that that entire game was just a shambles, wasn't it? Please. We'll talk about Mike Dean in a second because he's on the list, yeah. Um, obviously, Fabian Shea was missing from it, suspended. But the big talking point, yes, you can talk about the goal, Perez and etc. But the red card changed the game. It did. It was low. Yeah. Now, obviously, whether you say Rafa was forced to play Yedlin at centre back because of Fernandez's injury at half time, um, you were playing him in a strange position. You had Dummett though. So for me, that, that was the strange one though, when you have Paul so Dummett on the bench though. Stick him in, because yeah, I think he's he, more he of a centre on the He'd only just passed the fitness test though. I don't we want all, to we'll all agree it was a Yedlin, over Christmas. We'll all agree it's a Yedlin mistake. Lost the ball, brings the well, ball. Well, no, 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 no. It was Rafa's fault. No, no. no. You said <laughs> it was Rafa's fault. No, can you I just, did. No, I said Rafa has part of him for putting Yedlin there because he's not that good defensively a right back so put him in there Mark, so he, he is at fault there in terms of the challenge yeah Rafa's not yeah. at fault of that Yedlin messed up but for me and I think what is probably more fault is the referee because the referee didn't see and for me in this position he should have seen that Yedlin was getting tugged back fair so if you're looking at that you blew, you blew up for that Yedlin's not making that foul then so it's not a red card offence it's a free kick to Newcastle because Yedlin was fouled in the build-up. No, it was definitely a red card, Mark. No, no, I'm saying, no, no, I'm not saying it wasn't a red card, I'm saying if you go before that and Yedlin was being pulled back, it wouldn't have been a red card event because Yedlin would have got the free kick before having to make that ch- challenge. I so thought it's still so look maybe, at that. isn't it? I thought, you know, Yedlin playing at centre-back was really bizarre. If he doesn't play a centre-back, that doesn't that, Well, that, I was... I'm, that's why I'm, like, slow, s- slightly agreeing with what you say. I thought, like, the because reason I, I don't think it's too bizarre is because I... In the first half, Wolves were getting in behind with the pace a lot. Adama Traoré was just frequent, just at the defence all the time. And I thought Fernandez went off due to injury, but honestly did. And he's put uh, Yedlin in there to counter Adama Traoré running at the defence because Yedlin's quick in me. So they, uh, and he was just getting in behind again and again and again. But he's not defensive. No, but he's, he, he's got the pace and he had the cover out of the cells. Because he couldn't and, switch uh, it to four. Yadlin playing a setback. You could have done. You could have changed it a four four one four one, or you could have done a four could five one. Cure, it would have been a bit more sense. I mean, there's reasons for it, but it is bizarre. Really bizarre, and it changed the game. And then, obviously, if Wolves had a lot more of the ball. They had to score the last minute, which is a kick in the teeth again. Um, again, hello in the face. You, you talk about the goals as well. Jamal Lascelles. I've got a question. I've done it on the analyst video as well. 
him and Yedlin. The first, the first goal was terrible. Like the, the, it was a ball, ball, ball over the top, but it was the Celtic's reaction to him picking up the ball. And Yedlin got a shout on as well. Like, a so, such a lack of communication then. That, that, that's something you very rarely see from the cells, and that's something I could critique them for. But um, like yeah, two, two it, games, two like mistakes. The, the lad picks up the ball on the on the edge of the six yard box. He chests it down. He's got time to control it. And he's yeah. and he buries it. Could have had a Sunday dinner in the squad. Exactly. Yeah, we're looking at that two games, two mistakes by the cells. But I will say the one thing I think after that mistake, though, I think the cells stepped up. In a great game at Huddersfield, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, stepped up massively. Sense. And then you know Perez doing the celebration. I don't like that. I don't like that personally. Yeah. I'm with Paul on that. I don't like that. But yeah, Mike, as long as he scores goals, I don't give a shit what a celebration is. No, but it's, there's, there's, a, there's a there's a respect. You know, fans pay their money. Fans travel. Fans, you know, will have a, will have an we'll opinion have every opinion. single play, on every player. Yeah, but I I has think he, Perez, has he performed? I think Perez gets more stick than he other does. Players, and I think sometimes it's unwarranted. They just pick a player and they go out. Eight out of ten games, Mark, he's absolute one. Right. That's if he's not doing what he's supposed to, Rafa wouldn't be starting them over and over again. He is doing what Rafa's asked him to do. Who have we got? Well, we might have Almiron to take over that Perez for me frustrates me so much. But he will make mistakes, but he will get the odd goal. Look, there's some games but where he's got absolutely to, brilliant. But you've got to exp- he's got he's got to be more. But he's got to he's like as soon as the first as the first time that happens, if I'm Rafa or Jamal or Salisbury saying stop that, and you're not doing that at home because literally, you know, at the end of the se- at the end of last season, I said it's a big season for Perez because he was playing some fantastic football we can all agree that he was probably one of our best players towards the back end of the season and going into this season he needed to either step up to show that you know what he could actually play for a top maybe a top six team or a team in a different league and justify the Barcelona exactly. links yeah. yeah or justify those kind of big team links or is he going to be at the same level all the time and at the minute he's got to say this is the top six level the big team level he's about there you know but he's still got so much to do I think so I he's got so much down, potential, it's just down. he needs to write a few wrongs and hopefully he can do that. Well. Um, yeah. Mike Dean, who would like this opportunity about that ball he smash up his face. How do you, how do you miss well, that? This is a, do you know when people are saying, oh, it's not a red card, it's not a penalty because he was used for leverage? Who uses one arm for leverage? If you're going to jump, you use them both to get the leverage. To jump up there. You don't just do that and go, he looked, and I'm going to use him, he looked behind before Blitz. he did that. And do you know what got me even more so? He said, oh, I smacked him in, in the, f- the ball smacked him in the but face. Even so, that's a head injury. You stopped the game. He didn't. He wasn't happy like Perez after the game. No, was he wasn't. He? I don't know. Well, Rafa wasn't. Rafa was doing his... And be, uh, I still... And that's what really annoyed me, though. What? The first one was, for me, I thought it was a penalty. And I thought it was a red card. And that could have changed the game. But the second one, which was really, really what pissed me off, though, is as a seasoned ref, as he is... He should have, the first thing he should have done, even when he said, oh, the ball hit you in the face, that is then a head injury. The first thing you do is you stop the game. He didn't. He let them on, and Wolves nearly scored because of that. And that's what bugs me even more so, is the fact that even this, even if you disagree with the penalty, the first thing you should be doing as a ref for the head injury is stop that game. Oh, you get you're, comple- you're completely right. Yeah. Especially yeah. with how much has been the media the past couple of years, especially when Lloris picked up his concussion. Well, exactly. Look at, off it. It's been look looked at the, into massively. Well, exactly. Look at them. The first thing the ref did, stop people yeah. on. Ivan Murray, it. yeah, that's right. Oh. Like Mike Dean is a controversial a con- controversial yeah. figure. You know, he's, he's he, wants, he wants to eat. Look, look you, you see him in the Arsenal Tottenham game <laughs> recently. You know, he cannot win. And I think it's, it's typical of the FA. To go right, we'll give him that game. And look, the fact he, is, you put Mike Dean on it on a game where there's a television, where there's TV cameras. There's only one person that's going to be centre of attention, and it's that. It's not. It's not Newcastle versus Wolves versus Mike Dean. It should be just Newcastle versus Wolves. Yeah. But um, mm. off the field, there was no boycott. Obviously, this was hyped up for months. Well, a couple of months. Um. But because Mike said that there was a takeover going on, they're yeah. like, oh, let's call it off. Do you reckon the f- that's not the real reason, though? I've, I've heard rumours. I've heard rumours, and if, if they're wrong, I they're think wrong. They, they, I think they knew it was going to be an absolute flop, so they thought, let's cancel no. it so we're not embarrassed. I, no. I, I, allegedly, allegedly, and, I, and if the Magpie group want to say, say it's wrong, then by all means, I've heard that they were told there's going to be some news about a potential takeover. I would highly recommend that you don't do anything for the Wolves game because it'll put the potential takeover plans off. 
that's just, that's just, that's all that's heard as rumours that I've heard they could allegedly. No, no. The thing is, if there's poten potential if, if table not at all, right? If there's potential table at all, they've done their job. Like if Mike Ashley's on the verge of leaving oh, yeah. the club, they've done their job yeah. as a group, and that's their aim and purpose to drive Mike Ashley out of the club. And if there's any news of that, then they've done their job. Can you the genuinely believe that Peter Kenyon's rang up and went? Yeah, I'll beat Magpie Group. Can I ask you? No, no, not him. Test? Not him. I think. I think it's. I think well, it's no, somebody. That, that was the rumours. The rumours yeah. and things were going around and everything. Else. Was that representatives of Peter Kenyon contacted the yeah. fan groups and said, "Don't protest." I think it. He's not going to contact and go. He's not going to risk a takeover by contacting the fan group there. Because Mike actually might say, "Oh, well, hang on, yeah, this isn't the way it's, it's going to be. That's it, stop it, you." Yeah. I think they've tried to use it as an excuse or as a reason to call that off because they knew fine well that it was going to be a flop. They've seen yeah. that it didn't work against West Ham, and they've thought, "Oh, hang on, let's try and make the action and let's not do it against Wolves because it's going to be an absolute flop." It's not going to happen. So rather than them being embarrassed by them organising two big right, protests Are you okay? and nothing working. The only thing I will say though is that they picked the Wolves game because it was on TV and yeah. it was going to be watched globally. It was the four o'clock game on a Sunday. Mm. You know, it's the one that Sky have as that, their main game. Yeah. That was why we targeted yeah, it. What's the point? You boycott it, you go to a, you go to a pub, the you're just, still watching it on no, no. Sky. Who does Sky no, no. hear? But Sky get the conversation started. They go, "Ooh, there's not as many fans in the stadium today. That's not like Newcastle. Why is that? Oh, well, because this apparently well, Mike Ashley. Years, you know what I'm saying? Mike Ashley hasn't done this, this, and this. Should he be doing this, this, and this? I think he should be. That's the, that's the kind of conversation they're going to do. They're going to create that sort of debate. It creates headlines. It goes on Sky Sports News. It goes around the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the that's the sort of thing it does. What I will say is is that we, we touched on it before about the walking. It didn't work. This, they're obviously not going to. We've not done this uh, boycott. It, apparently, there's rumours that it could be the Huddersfield game now in February. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd personally, I would, I, if, if I was the I'm non group, stop, stop. I would stop all this. I personally, I would stop all this. I would just well, do your behind the scenes stuff. Here's the thing: if you look at the games where there's been like protests or, or unrest, Newcastle haven't done that well. well that's the first five home games. When you look at the ones where they, they'd stopped it and they didn't do it, which is Watford and Bournemouth, the games where we didn't have anything and there was no talk of anything. The atmosphere was better, and we got the, the results. We went back to West Ham where there was a, a protest. So again, when there's been that talk and stuff around it, I think that can have an impact on the games. Of course it can. So let's let's look at Fulham where there's absolutely no rumours or planned. anything, and look and see whether or not that has an effect. Man United, nothing planned. Man U, I think. See that for me though, that's the one where if you're looking at a game, you pick the Man U game. That's the one where you'd really test and see if people are going to do it. Not but I do also it, think a big they, game on TV. I also think that they need praise as well for actually trying to do something. Um, yeah. It's easier to criticise them as well. Yeah, but I, but think, I think also you've got to look at it and think, you know what, they've actually tried to do something yeah. that might not work. Yeah, but I but think it's the got a, And they've got a, lot, they've got a lot of people talking on the first Yeah, they've got, got a lot of the attention, so that the need We've went to group meetings and things like that, you know. The, Spur, the Spurs game, they did very well. They did very well. The Spurs game and... Uh, they got everything spot on there, and but I just think if they did that maybe one game a month rather than every game, I think that might. Not, it, it's difficult to say in hindsight because like, there's no. But for me, I, I, like I said, I think exactly. it's targeting his business rather than so keep it as business and don't bring it into the, the club as such because I think let's because again we're not we're not safe by any no, no. means, and I think our focus needs to be on backing those players, whether or not you like them or not. But we need to back up from back those players when it comes to the game type. And try and do it. Like I said, you've made the comment say that it went from 400 or whatever pence down to 200. Yeah. That's having an effect. And I think, yes, it might be something to do with the retail sector and stuff like that, but I also think the, the amount of negativity around sports directors of brand, and I think sports directors of brand has probably become a bit toxic now. Oh, that's massive. And that's where, and I think that's probably where I think this takeover talk is probably coming a bit more into prominence because I think he's looking and thinking, hang on, if I don't get rid of this soon. I'm in real trouble with my businesses, and I think that's where he's looking at. And he's looking at, de yeah, potentially Debenhams to be taken over. He's thinking, right, if I get this capital of two, yeah, two seventy-five or three hundred million, I can plug it in and just go. Exactly. Do All right, and so we're going to move on to Huddersfield away. Um, win back system once more. Um, this is working really well, Kyle, despite little possession once more. Possession, the possession stats are just for the cameras, mate. Honestly, if you get the result, uh, it, it could be one percent possession. Uh, honestly, I couldn't give a toss, mate. It, as long as the result's there, 
give give them ninety percent possession, give them ninety five. As long as we win the game, it's all that matters. You really like the swing back. I, 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 I like the wing back system. I think we play better football. I think we counter attack better. It suits what it would take away from home. Um, yeah, I, I do like the wing back system. I didn't think I'd ever say it because <laughs> like there's been times so where pre- to uh, there's already. been times where previous managers have tried a wing back system and we've been hammered like like really badly. So Is like that because we didn't have the defenders that could do it. Or did we have a better manager? Maybe, but like maybe both. But. Rafa prepares his teams, whether they're playing free at the back, four at the back, it's just, it's just Rafa down to a tee, and we're defending well, so... But we've got, got five defenders where, if you, at the minute, if we put, if we choose any of those five as a three, I don't think anyone's going to have any grumbles or, or worries or concerns. No. And when's the last time you've seen, had in your castle United side where you can look at five defenders and go, if any of them are yeah, we're not really... Not, not my way, to uh, Speaking of defenders, Mark, I'll come to you for this. Jamal Asseld had a much, much better game. But was he a lucky boy to stay on with his flying challenge into the poetry? I don't think that was a bit. Do you not? So yeah, I'm going to I would, I would, it, say, I I, no, I would say yellow, but I don't Both think... Both off the ground. I, I, I still don't think it... He was. slipped, man. I think like Stephen Jones. I think I, 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 think, I, think, <laughs> I think yellow, but I don't think... No, I think, I don't think I'll tell you what, I think saved him. Greasy conditions. Yeah, off the pitch. I well. think that's what saved him. I think the referee's gone, do you know what? He's probably mistimed by a second and it's chucking it down. If it was a normal day, probably isn't it? Probably you know, you know what it reminded me of is Williamson uh, when John well, Carver. Oh, yeah. It was very similar. Like similar, yeah. I've, I've never been so happy to see someone get sent off in my entire life. I hope you're talking about Mike there. What? Not Jamal. No, uh, about, Mike, <laughs> about Mike Williamson, <laughs> yeah, yeah last night when he got sent off. Because I knew, I knew he was going to miss a couple of games, Williamson, at the time, so it was like. Thank God he's been. Sad I'm not being funny though, but if you if you watched that in a Sunday league, that wouldn't even be a yellow man. That's just a normal tackle that you see yeah, in the Sunday league down the, the parks, man. I honestly think he's a lucky boy. Rob, what do you reckon? <sighs> I'm I'm on the fence with that one. No, you're not, not doing a mark, are you? It's no, not usually that I'm on. Mark, man. Some referees. I haven't been on the bench head. for a while. Some referees don't. That's just a matter of fact. I think that's just more where the laws of where the laws of the game come into play. Where. It's not foolproof, it's down to what the referee's judgment and opinion is. That being said, yeah, I mean, he, he is he is lucky not to get sent off. Yeah. Yeah, like on, on a bad day, that, that could well be different, and who on knows what could happen after that. Would have been. What do you think about our goal, Rob? Uh, Describe that goal to me. What a lovely team goal. What a like, lovely passing, because I mean, you got played out from the back and Huddersfield did not touch well the next time Huddersfield touched it was fishing the ball out the back of the net. That's probably one of the best team goals we've scored this season. I know we've, we've not scored many to actually choose. I think from. it was reminiscent of what goal again what team goal against Redmond where they like, did it from kick off was everyone, everyone touched the Boom, ball. Yeah. But, yeah. It was very reminiscent of that, which is uh, fantastic. Well, you know, one. Both played well. But we'll, we'll beat, yeah. we'll beat that many teams there. Do you know, <laughs> yeah. do you know it was actually nice though, right? Do you know what I think the hardest bit was? Was La Salle's passing the ball to Shaw because he had three men on him. Yeah, like I, I wasn't. Day, I, like, I that wasn't was happy when that happened. I, I remember look. watching it live and like being like, "Why is he doing that? Why yeah. is he doing that?" And, and then he plays it up the field and then in a couple of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another day, another defender. They nick it off it and they were in trouble. But because we're playing in a way where we have confidence on the ball, because if you remember La Salle's in the championship, oh my word. When he had the ball, he speaks sometimes, it was very tough. Yeah, to he's worked on that and so much. And he's done much. so you have to you have to say he's improved so much, but has, yeah. the actual football, oh my god, it was like I hadn't, I hadn't seen Even the Man goal. Willow did well in it. <coughs> and this yeah, is what I, I, I hadn't I hadn't seen the goal. He was a third man kill, by the way. Yeah, he was. I was at I was at work, so I hadn't seen the goal, so I knew we won. And I, I watched I was watching the match the test going, we honestly just scored a goal mm. like that. Like yeah. the ball from Perez, Mankios was perfect and Rondon's finish. I, honestly. You know, you just have to look back and go, was that Newcastle? <laughs> that was the, the best way to scope was that actually the Newcastle, Newcastle of old. The fact is, yeah, I'm not being, I'm not being, people, people, they? but if it was somewhere like man, like a Man City goal, you would have had every Sky Sport pundit yeah, that was kind of absolutely walk, yeah. getting it. Oh, yeah. be a wet dream. So, ex- yeah. Anna, yeah. would have been spoken over it. But because it's Newcastle, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't get it as, as much there, but like I said, it was, it was beautiful. Horrible game, mate. Beautiful goal. Oh, beautiful. Well, we said we would have took a scrappy one-nil win. We just had to get them three points. points. Three points. I'm going to be honest. Huddersfield, real. Yeah, yeah, they might have had most possession, but in terms of actual concrete chances, 
no, there wasn't any note. You can see why they struggle. We do yeah, as well. They like, can't score. Yeah. Just, just like what I said back in September. They one, cannot score to like save their lives. There, there, there is one difference between us and them. Rondon. Yeah, Salomon Rondon. Rondon. I think Rondon, when you play him against weak defenders, that's when he capitalises. If he's up against strong defenders like he was up against Burnley, for example, then the, those, the, those are the sort of defenders yeah, yeah. He needs help. those are the sort of defenders that can make him have a quiet game but Rondon like, like we saw against Bournemouth like we saw against Huddersfield like I expect to uh, against Fulham you know I think we can see him you got to remember shifting. Rondon he's not getting many chances mm. he's, he's so clinical he's still scoring this is a, that's he's, a difference like that's a difference between him and Gale like Gale's not clinical but you know, Rafa's getting something out of him that you know Tony Pugh this and yeah um, Alan Pardew last season record, couldn't get it. Well, Alan Pardew not West getting West the best deal of his career. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. And, one and three, one and four at West Brom. Yeah. Considering West Brom, probably the same kind of level, chances wise. And when nah, he did Malaga, he was phenomenal at Malaga. Mm. So one, one and two and a half games. We didn't have uh, a manager, manager until now. Rafa's just getting these strengths, though. I think they're getting the, like, the best out of them. But the, the, big, the biggest thing, I think, was defensively, we were solid again. And you look at De Patra, De, De Potra, De Patra. De Potra! De Potra, whatever. <laughs> Every time that the ball came up, we had three on one. Yeah. Every single yeah. time. They and left them very isolated. They did. Field. The likes of Pritchard. Um, and no, one no, yeah, nobody. Where we have that, where if Rondon wins the ball, a Perez or an Atsu at the time. I will see. We'll probably stand for that. There was one player which was missing, and that was Moy. Yeah, he's, he's the like he, most creative player. Yeah, you remember, yeah. no, remember when Blackpool win the in the Charlie Premiership Adam. and had Charlie Adam? Yeah. That's what Aaron Moy's like in that team. Yeah, but for me, when, I, when I've seen Aaron Moy, yeah, I'm good. The best yeah, that that's, that's really good news. That, but the one I, I probably see the weakest player I think in that game was Kennedy. Just about to come on to that because yeah. Dummer came on, got a few minutes at the end, it's good to see him back in it because we definitely need that. We've talked about it already, that left back problem that we've got. When Paul Dummer is out, we struggle. There seems to be a new guy there every week. But yeah, how if you even look a couple of seasons back, we would have been looking good at Christ now, Paul Dummett starting. Yeah. Now we're going for Christ's sake, come again, Paul Dummett starting. Ago, I, was late, Dummett. Yeah. I think well, he's I actually, so much. I also think he's looking a lot like slimmer in, in ter terms yeah. of like. I thought he's toned up, personally. I think he's just toned and up. Banter's yeah. much better as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> now, you know, there's a Paul Dummett and. Uh, it's uh, one of our own. He is, yeah, and do you know what? We've. He, gets, he has got a lot of stick. I think he did an interview with the newspaper. He says, I think it was, I think it was the Huddersfield game or the Southampton game where he came to take a uh, throw in towards the strawberry corner again, ran and pause. He said, He did an interview after that. He said, You know, I used to have people on the street going, Dumb it, you're shite. Dumb it, you're shit. Dumb it, you're not that good. Mm. Where he got, had, a, had a song for him. They were clapping, and he deserves it. He wanted it. Mm. It is good to have him back because he is our I best left back, if you like to say. Or I think he would struggle on an attacking side, but that that way not an attacking side. So he suits. Perfect for Rafa. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Suits a very like, Rafa Benitez type player. Like, I'd like yeah. to see him do as uh, another. Well, especially when we play Manu in the the same one that he did the last time we played them around January. Before he was when McLaren was manager towards the end of when he just. Came running on and smacked that ball in the back of the That was a bit. It was a bit of a deflection, though. Let's Man, be you are. Uh, and have a call. Let's have another one like oh, that. Of course, we'd we'll like to see him get it more forward, but we're not in that position to do no, that. No. But he so might do it if, if we go three at the back. So that was a massive, massive three points um, for us as well. We so needed it as well as it turned out because Arsenal have been useless for the Yeah, it didn't do any yeah. as well. Get Six to beat Southampton. Southampton haven't won at St Mary's all year and then Arsenal turn up and beat Arsenal. If we got a point at St Mary's and it was the worst game of football I've ever seen. You, how long did you think were you on the bus for that? I was on the bus, I was a train. Plus, six, I, hours I, there, six hours there, six hours back. I even messaged you, I'm like, you poor soul. Right, so, great three points. And then this is the bit where we're going to say we've won Fulham or not. We're not going to talk too much about Fulham. Um, it was great three point class going to be on the next podcast. That's all I'm saying on it. So we're not going to talk too much about Fulham. Of course, we've got beat. That'll be on the next podcast because we're running out of time. And then I need a third one, don't I? So we've got a point against Fulham. We're going to be talking more about Fulham in next month's podcast as we're running out of time. We're not running out of time. Just an excuse. Right. Um, so the last topic we're going to be talking about is January is here. I'm literally a few days away. Are we, are we not Happy going? Happy New Year! Happy New Year, <laughs> Merry Christmas, all of that. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> are we signing anybody? Um, let's just say, Johnny, we have some money. 
Yeah. Where do we need strength the most? Full backs. We need cover. Just desperately need cover. Um, I know Mark Shakey said that we do need cover. Uh, well, I know we need cover, but in terms of, I think, the most important area, I think, if we're going to no, look you're at someone... No, you're going to tell us that's one of them. That's, I, just, that, 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 that we do. I think we also need uh, another defensive midfielder. I just think Diame, Hayden, I just don't... I think we just need someone there just a bit more solid. Um, maybe we can just do a little bit more with the ball as well. I think we could do something like that, and I think we're crying out for another forward player as well. I think, uh, yes, Rondon, if he, if he keeps fit all season, keeps us in the division but possibly Hosu exactly. is a question mark and I think mm. you've got to look is there a striker out there I would, I would hope to think that Rafa Rafa's identified a few players but in order forward player yeah. full back defensive midfielder um, wingers we can focus at the end of the season because I think we've got all agree on that those I think yeah. we need number, number 10 yeah for me I think forward the most important because Goals Put it this way, if mm-hmm. Dummer gets in, just can we, we replace him? Probably, Possibly, yes. Yeah. If Yedlin does, level. can we? Yes, probably. If Diomi does, yes, probably we could. If Rondon does, okay. no. No, but if Rondon gets in, can we replace him? No. no. Simple fact. So if you're looking at, if, if we're looking, if we're going to replace him, I think Rondon is a striker. It's the one where we really need someone because I don't think Yosu is not going to be the Rondon. He's not going to get with the goals. So we need that forward in who's good at But get. we haven't been linked with any strikers, that's the thing as well. Yeah. Like we've been linked with obviously with Almiron as a number ten. But well, I think no that's because Rondon scoring the goal. But, is, but that, that could still be a good thing though, because we weren't linked with Key until he was signed in the tunnels. Signed. 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 Someone told me we've signed Key. I'm like, what? Huh? We've signed ah. Key. There's yeah. me driving doing a video. <laughs> so we've signed Key. Oh, but I was just looking, I just seen Lee Ryan go. Newcastle are going to make a sign, and then the next thing you know, Has he's it? there with his with his shirt. I'm going. I'll tell you what that. Was. But do you know the thing is that like I would love us to go for a striker that we've never thought. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we've, I said that's a player I'd love to see in Newcastle shirt. But there's nobody that's really screaming out at the minute. Like mm. you know, like it's, I, I always look at the top teams, like the top top teams, and and go, are there reserves to get in a game? If they're not, is it worth putting a bid in? Well, yeah, totally, because this was. Well, there's only, only two, only two football see, manager way. Actually, and I'm yeah. just going to come back. You said we weren't linked with a forward. Yes, we have been. Who? Tammy Abraham. Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's a good point. I think, mm. I think he's. I, I don't think he's a gamble because I think he's he's played well in, with Villa and you know, he's he's scoring loads of goals for Villa. Yes, it's the championship. I, yes, it's a different. I think he'll do well, and I think he, yeah, even if we even if we're Off looking at 15, 20 firm, I think there's still yeah. If we're looking at the some market value, Mike from. Ashley way of doing business. We can still improve him and get more money from him. And so that, yeah, because that's the way mm. Ashley Lowe would look at things. If I'm going to buy this player, am I going to get the money yeah. back later on? And I think with him, yes, I think we probably could. And yeah, we could probably buy him for 15, 20, and yeah, if if time comes, it maybe 30, 40 million. So I think he will get better. Does he? The only problem I have with Tammy Abraham is that um, Southern lad beat the teams that are in the South or like Midlands. Would he come up north? Venezuela is a lot further south than London, you take no. Yeah, I would take a Rigi, definitely. I, I just don't see him leaving Liverpool. But if you know what I mean? no, I, I, I generally don't. I think what about Solanke? Solanke, no. it's been linked with nice. Rangers, but I, I, I think I think he's well, another. Sturridge is another one. I think I think the problem is no, we'd have to buy Sturridge. the player. We'd have yeah. to buy these players. We can't actually yeah. go in and put a loan in because we've got Kennedy on loan, yeah. and there's somebody else Rondon. With Rondon. So I think for me, if I was, is there? Yeah, the question will make Rondon permanent. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, and then he frees up alone. But we'd give up Is there any names you would love to see coming? Messi. Messi. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's, realistically. Let's, let's go realistically. Let's play, let's play a bit of FIFA 19 and put your budget right down to about 15, 20 million. Oh. Callum Wilson. Would you take him? Cut it. Oh, right. Bournemouth. Yeah, 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 but it's a name. He's, 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 not gonna, he's not going to leave Bournemouth, but I'd say he's, he's not going to probably be a good fit for us. Probably sure. double his wages. Yeah. He's not going to leave yeah. Bournemouth for us. Exactly. He's had yeah. double his wages. He's had. But he's 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 he'll have it on 30 grand. But he's saying that for Chelsea. You're saying he wouldn't need both. Richie did. Yeah, but it's a different kettle of fish. Callum Wilson could. He's been linked with Chelsea and Arsenal. He's not been linked with. He's not. Gonna, he's not going to come to Newcastle. He's been linked with Chelsea and Arsenal. Josh King as well. Josh that's King. That's, yeah, more, that's, more, that's a more realistic one. Josh. Josh King. But uh, Callum Wilson, no chance. Let's just. Let's just say there isn't much money. What about Vokes? I think this Which is. This is a. A left field one, but. It, which is probably more realistic. A little bit money. And that's what I'm looking. At, I'm looking more. But Vokes isn't a bad shout in terms of. No, it's just another Arsenal. Yeah. I think he's better than Do we go and get two foreign loans if we haven't got much money? 
if they're the right players and they're the right people that we want then yes I think uh, there's, there's a PSG left back that we have been there with uh, yeah. I forget is it, is it Stanley and Soki so, yeah. and Soki yeah again I, I don't know but, but then you know if you go and get a loan then we'll get Ibrahimovic on loan <laughs> well technically yes but uh, I, no I, no he's free no he's still under the year yeah, no he's signed a contract yeah. with yeah. yeah but I'm sure we're going to get him on loan yeah you're going to talk MLS then you're going to go into the Rooney factor you're going to yeah. go into Almiron this is what I'd the still take ways. Rooney he's not coming here yeah, early on, early on, early on the podcast you said that MLS wasn't good enough, so you need a balance. No, but there's a difference. Ro- no, <laughs> Rooney would have Rooney <laughs> has played <laughs> in the Premiership and proven it. Uh, he knows how push his foot so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a difference. Knife in the heart. Exactly. Rooney has played in the Premiership and proven that he's played in the Premiership. Almiron hasn't, so that's where there's a bit of a difference. Yeah, but he's still but he's four. Four. He's he's just, you know what I mean? Oh. He's already said he just want to come to England, so you know what I mean? He's well, would you start he's Perez? Who would you rather start, Perez or Rooney? If you had the, if you had the chance. Of course you'd pick Rooney. Yeah, I'd pick Rooney over Perez, but I'd pick, I'd, I'd pick most people over Perez, to be fair. But <laughs> who you, is, is well, that you said that this isn't good. There's one thing so. I'd love to see, but I don't think it's Deeney. I would oh, absolutely man, man. love to see him. I think I think he'd be a great signing for us. I think he would actually he would offer us something different, and I think he'd put pressure on us going forward. But again, would Watford sell him? Possibly for the He's right price. Of on there now. Possibly for the right price, but would he leave? If, if Almiron's coming see, to but, us, that's going to leave our budget at a minuscule amount, not enough to buy Dean. Thirty-nine, thirty-one. Who do you see leaving? Hayden, Hayden. Darlow. Dollar's no. been linked with Leeds, yeah. hasn't he? One of the key bats has got a gun, sure. Even, even Elliot, Elliot as well. Elliot, Darling, Elliot really. will be the first one. If Rafa has to choose a keeper to yeah. go, it will be Elliot. I think the thing is, though, you look at the likes that, that we have got a lot of players that we'd like to see leave the club. I think um, Hayden, we can probably get the most money for. Do you reckon? I think so. I, I, I think we're at more than three. I, I think. Oh, we're talking ten million. Yeah, so ten million. Yeah, so, so, so someone so, to drive him. I think. I think. I think. We, I think we could get maybe six or seven million for him. Wow. In this market. Really? I don't market. think. I know it's January, but the, even in this no, market. No, here's a question. People might have wanted him in in the summer. Are they going to want him now? It depends who. Again, it depends who comes after him. If it's a Premier League club, if it's if it's a Brighton or like that sort of team, then we can we can ask. To be fair, right Hugh is a very. It's very Work fond of players it. like here, yeah. so like you know. If if it's like a Villa or a Leeds or a West Brom or that sort of club, potentially we can ask for that sort of money. If it's somebody lower than that, again you might have to send them out on loan and then try and negotiate a fee at the end of the season. Other players that I can think off the top of my head, do we send Jacob Murphy out on loan? I've got him on the list, yeah. Because he, no. for me. So yes, he's played well. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think we've got the squad depth yeah. to let someone like that go out. Yeah, but, he's not, but he's not playing. We call to be him. Faisal on the bench, yeah, other than Everton in the past six games. Yeah, no, I know, bench, but I, if I was, do you know who I, what I'd do with Jake Murphy? I would send him back on loan in Norwich. The top of the table, if he gets them promoters, would they take him? Exactly. Well, yeah. of course they would. And, sure and, and, really? plus, and you can look at it from both ways. If he does well for Norwich, he comes back to us with loads of confidence. You're thinking, well, I feel like a Premier League player now. I have a question. Have because I've actually watched Norwich's results quite closely there because I've got a family member who's supposed to them down there. And they seem to be doing things the, the right way. They're building from the academy. They're bringing the, the academy. They're bringing the academy stars through. We've got six or seven They've Germans. sold Josh Murphy, Jacob Murphy and Madison for quite big sums and then invested in... We bought the wrong player from Norwich. We should have bought that Madison. Longstaff. Honestly, we <laughs> So long stuff again, I would send him out on loan if, yeah. if um, I think I think the perfect kind of level would be probably top league one, middle league one. I don't think Longstaff will go out on loan if we don't get a midfielder in to cover Keith. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm talking about Keith first. Yeah. So we're going to do it in January. But again, well, look at that. Shaw could probably drop into midfield if. Yeah. You're, talking, you're talking about the goalkeepers before. What I've just realised is I, 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 don't, I don't know if Darlow's still injured, but Woodman's been Woodman's been the number two. For the last few games, and I don't know if that's, just, I don't know, I don't know if that's yeah, an injury yeah. or he's just gone. You know what? Da- he's doing um, so well now. Just keep Elliot's fourth choice, yeah. yeah. technically, because he's been picking Woodman ahead of him on yeah. the bench. I Elliot's think it's not in Rafa's good books. Dolo was injured, and maybe yeah, Rafa's looking at what Woodman's doing and going. You know, I can't see a reason why I'm going to take you off the bench, so yeah. I'll leave you on there. I don't think Elliot's in his bad books. I just it's, it's just better keepers. No, but I don't think bad. But I think he, in terms of he's going there, going right. Debravka, yes. Darlow, yes. Woodman, yeah. 
No, no, I, I, yeah, I understand. So if he had yeah. the option, I think he'd probably sell Elliot, keep Dolan with the set in the maybe we'll save Lazar. Yeah, go yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'd drive him to the nearest day, I thought, me. Yeah. That's a nice little save on the wages, and then. It, it, I don't. Yeah. I, it looks like it, there's you know not going to be many that are really made me laugh though is in the comments there when people were talking about Hayden and someone went, oh, we've got a replacement for Colpack. I nearly. He's a he's a I nearly myself so laughing. I'm kind of you think that Colpack's a replacement for It Hayden. sounds like there's not many people permanently leaving the club. They're very similar. <coughs> that's Colpack and Hayden. They're just. They're well, you couldn't, really the separate, you couldn't really separate uh, them in the championship, but I, I preferred Hayden with Shelby in the championship. I think yeah, he, added, so, yeah. he added a bit more, but. Any, uh, any other targets, any other players backwards. leaving before a wrap up? I don't think many will leave. No, I've no yeah. I, I don't think. Just I think, look at the squad depth. I, I don't think any like the, the main squad will leave, if I'm going to except maybe Hayden, if he still wants to go. Off. I, I think otherwise yeah. you're probably looking at the likes of Lazar and the, the, the reserve Finch. aspect, maybe Elliot. I don't think there'll be that many that'll leave because I don't think Rafa can afford to leave. To let, Look at the leave. squad depth, we can't really afford to let many players go. Would you say Lazar, maybe Elliot? Would you, the only thing I was Hayden and Adipo, yeah, in terms of letting players leave. Other than that... The only thing yeah. that worries me, in terms of big players, doing if a big comes in for the sales... He has a question. He has a question. He's still got his English and potential, he's wow. young. There's still obviously that kind of chance. Well, here's a question for you. Mm. Get Ron, would you get Ron done on a permanent? Yeah. Well, no, the money's and, there. And, no, and recall Gail. Um, no, I, 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 I would you sell Gail? I would sell Gail, and the only reason why I would sell him is because I just think of that the stocks there where yeah. the score goes from the and I, I just think if you go if you go to West Brom, do you know what? Let's do a deal, a couple of million swap. quid or a swap deal or something like that. I, think I would happily pro- take Rondon over Gail. Yeah, I would as well. I yeah. would say Gail, you could probably get twelve. I think you could thirteen million. Possibly even a touch more, you know, mate. With, with, if he yeah. keeps on scoring goals for West Brom, I'll just take a swap deal straight up. Yeah. Right no, I, I, I would, I would rate one done a few. That's why I think we might have it. It's only like eighteen months for Palm. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult one, but like obviously you'd. Get, if you can get Rondon done in January, I would say at the beginning of the season we're looking at Rondon going, oh yeah, maybe it was good getting him on loan. Now when we're seeing the real Rondon, you're going, this is why, this is why Rafa said he is my number one target. I don't care. About, that's the more. The, the only thing I is, want. the only thing is for January, you you know for a fact, Palace are going to spend money. Yeah. You know for a fact Southampton are going to have a little bit of money. You know for a fact Cardiff are going to spend a bit because they're, yeah, they're there's a question of Fulham will go for them as well. Is there anyone who Palace can bring in that would be the replacement for Zaha? They need, Zaha a, Zaha they, they, Zaha. they need a centre forward, Crystal Palace. Well, supposedly they're talking about bringing Victor Moses in. Is he really going to No, but what I'm in saying in? is that. Well, my, 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 re- my reasoning in this, for this is that you know these teams are going to spend money. Are we going to do exactly the same? I think at most, mate, we're looking at Rondon permanent. Couple of and, months, and, yeah. and a left oh, back months. on loan. That, I think that's it. Man. That's what See, we're I'm gonna, and this is where people are going because we're talking about spending money there. But you look at spending, spending money doesn't necessarily mean anything. Look at Fulham for Christ's sake. They spent 100 million in their bottom. No, I get they that. overachieved last season. They, they, they overachieved, but they, they, what no, they, but I also think they've splashed out and tried to. I know to they've got great tactical players, but I think still think. If you take out the big hit as they battle League One, you take oh, out the, mm, the likes mm. of. Oh, like of the Ken Yeah, if you take out. And split that squad. Yes, yeah, he's not playing. Them. I didn't. He's not playing. He didn't play, did he? <laughs> <laughs> didn't play against us, did he? <laughs> Where was he? <laughs> but then again, I, I don't really think Session Young's been. I'll take yeah, Session Young. No, but I, 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 he's a left back. Would you go I would take Session Young, but in terms of Spurs, last season, Rose, everything you heard was Session Young, Session Young, Session Young. Not really as much this year. <coughs> so whether or not it's a case of the step up. I think it'll go forward, mate, Rafa, yeah. anyways. Uh, that's it, isn't it? That's a wrap-up. Yeah, yeah, so. uh, that is it. That is your latest monthly podcast. Of course, it's available on your iTunes to SoundCloud as well. Hope you enjoy it as well. Uh, thank you very much, lads. Thank no you. problem, thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Well done. That's it. Nice one. Podcast done.